Hello, I'm Dino, and um, I just felt like it would be a fun thing to do to record a, a demo of my experience with the iSound and Mod P products. I am uh, just an amateur bass player and a multi-instrumentalist, and uh, I have occasion to play out a little bit on bass, uh, and I'm interested in having a processed sound, uh, but I don't want to bring a laptop and I don't want to invest in pedals. I have a maker background and, and some tech experience and interests. And uh, I've been a uh, Raspberry Pi user for uh, all kinds of purposes, uh, audio streaming and uh, multimedia players, uh, game emulators, um, you know, firewall uh, appliances, etc. And uh, I found a really exciting product that uh, helps me uh, with this problem, and uh, it's right here on the screen. It's a Pi Sound. Uh, what it is is a Raspberry Pi. Uh, in this case, it's a 4B with 8 gigs, so like kind of the high-end Raspberry Pi. And, uh, and then in this case, it is a daughter card, and the daughter card is called Pi Sound. It's by Blockus.io, small company, and um, the the card has the two volume and uh, controls in and out. It has a programmable button on it, and it has instrument connectors there. Those are stereo connectors, and um, can handle just a regular quarter inch or stereo quarter inch jacks. Um, I've got a an Ibanez uh, Ergodyne uh, motor base. I have. I guess early 2000s. It's a five string and it has flats on it um, that I'm going to use as my signal source. And what you're seeing uh, up there, up there is uh, a screen. It's a browser window. And in the browser is the Mod P interface. Um, Mod P is an emulator, it's an open source project. And it runs on the Raspberry Pi, amongst other platforms. And uh, it allows you to uh, create signal chains and apply virtual modeling, virtual effects. Uh, this is a common kind of a platform uh, in a lot of the DAWs. So, you know, GarageBand or Logic or uh, Pro Tools, uh, Sonar, you know. They all have these plugins, uh, VST plugins or AU plugins. And the plugins allow you to create, um, you know, virtual pedal boards. And uh, in this case, it has uh, stereo ins. As I mentioned, there's a balanced input on the device. It has a MIDI in, and I failed to mention that, in fact, there are MIDI in and out on the device as well. And so you can uh, do all kinds of things with MIDI, including chaining and programming, uh, triggers uh, for different uh, patch changes and things like that in the pedals. You can also plug the keyboard in. There's a Mod P has a bunch of uh, sound samples and synthesizer plugins as well. And then there's the outputs, of course. And the outputs are a MIDI out and, uh, and stereo audio outputs. And um, so what I have here is a very basic board. I'm calling it blank. Uh, the board here is one of many patches that I've saved. You can create new ones, create snapshots of your boards. You can create banks that you can use the button to shift between. I'll show that in a little while. And, uh, and then basically you just go ahead and model your tone the way you like. Um, so I have this blank one here so you can hear. You know, I've got my bass plugged in and uh, it just uh, plays straight through and uh, into the recording on the computer. So here's what it sounds like just playing. You know, um, just a dry instrument uh, doesn't direct into my uh, my uh, digital workstation, and uh, there's no uh, distortion or clipping or anything like that. You have to pay attention to setting your levels, uh, but once you've done that, you get a very clean recording, a very clean sound. For instance, to replace um, like a Sans amp or 
preamp, and you can send audio to a live uh, sound system through the Snake or into your recording system or your amplifier or uh, whatever your output, you know, your, your output is going to be. So that's the dry sound. Um, and, you know, what you can do is you, you run the Pi. Notice this is a Raspberry Pi, but it doesn't plug into a monitor or a keyboard or anything like that. It's just got Wi-Fi. And uh, it actually can be its own hotspot. So if you're somewhere and you just want to connect like an iPad to it, um, you can just set it up so that it's its own hotspot and you can connect that way. Uh, or, as I do, you do all that initially uh, offline, or rather, uh, you know, in a setup environment. And then once you're done, you can just carry this with you with the power supply. And you can use the button. It basically is in the form factor of a, an effect pedal. Although it's an, a Lucite case, I wouldn't necessarily recommend stepping on it. But you can switch patches by pressing the button once, twice, three times, uh, and you can then call up the, uh, the, the patches that you've created. And uh, in the UI, you have the ability to create bank these banks. So the button is a bank. And then this is a uh, you know, 1 through N. I don't know even how many I have in here anymore. And you pick from all your saved patches. You drag them in. You reorder them. And then uh, once you press the button, they pull up. So. Uh, that's how that is uh, created. Here is the master list of all the banks, at least at this point, that I've created. Uh, I've done uh, 20 of them, I think, and uh, just mostly experimenting at this point. And I've created some that are MIDI. This really complicated looking one here has uh, signal processors and generators and step sequencers and things like that, all the way down to something like you saw, which is just a gain stage. That's in there just to allow me to save the patch. Otherwise, if I save an empty one, it, it gives me an error. Uh, all right, so let's just make some more sounds. Uh, what I've done is I have created a kind of a sans app emulator. Like I said, I don't want to spend money on pedals. I'm not interested in exotic effects necessarily for the bass, uh, although you know I'm experimental and, and like having fun. But um, certainly, you can do a lot and have a lot of fun with these tools. Um, but for the purposes of, play, of playing in a live combo, uh, rock bass, basically, you know, I'm looking for uh, somewhat compressed, uh, somewhat, you know, hi-fi sounding, um, with a little bit of, um, you know, so, uh, kind of warmth in the tone. And so uh, what I've got here is uh, a studio preamp. Uh, uh, emulator. I've got a head here, which is this sort of uh, stereo head. You can pick the amp model. You can pick this just the uh, EQ style, and you can pick the uh, cabinet output. So I have 410 output, like a little tight GK head or uh, you know, combo or something like that. And then I have actually after that in the chain a uh, compressor, a dynamics compressor. And so these three together uh, are what I'm calling a sans amp replacement. And uh, this is the sound that you get out of this particular chain. So you can hear the old bite in it, just a little hint of a hint of a bite. And uh, that compressor gives me a nice long ring out, long sustain, so I can play with my dynamics uh, you know, in the mix and let the uh, board manage that a little bit. Um, OK. So that's the Sansamp replacement patch. Uh, let's go back into the well here and pick something a little more interesting. Uh, this is something you really can't do uh, with a conventional pedal board, not without spending you know, thousands of dollars. Uh, what I've got here is what I call a triamp base. And so it looks complicated. Drag and drop process is super easy just to lay stuff out, connect it the way you want. And uh, there's a couple things about this. What, what I uh, 
while ago, I watched a guy from an old friend of mine, Dave Lavin, uh, who has a, a Gens Benz uh, amp separate head. And in there was a little tube and uh, a little notch for sending the mid-range or a sort of variable Q part of the signal to this warm tube preamp. And you can get a little bit of bite from it. You can kind of do some tailoring of that. And I thought that was pretty cool. I thought the idea of splitting your signal and uh, not just stereo, but actually in uh, ranges based on you know notch filters or uh, bandpass filters, and then applying different signal processing to those, and then summing those all back together again. I thought that was pretty cool. So uh, I wanted to emulate that, and this is what I came up with. Again, these are all standard in the Mod P tool set. So I have a gate, you know, a noise gate. I have a front-end compressor here, mild compressor. And then I have this splitter stage here. And so there are three... Um, there are three pit pass filters here. A low pass filter on the top, and that low that low pass filter is set at just around 80 hertz, 81. I just use the dial to get precise. Just listen and uh, decided how it sounded. Uh, there's also a, a, a filter here, um, the order, and uh, you know, how much that filter really suppresses. Um, you can sort of dial that in. Also, it's switchable. And then I have a second pass here. So again, I'm splitting out of the, the compressor in three, into three parallel inputs. Um, then I've got, as I said, I've got this mid, mid, middle range here, which is peaking at about 423 hertz, and a Q that you can set, and then uh, sort of the order, and you can dial that up and back. And then I have a high pass filter. High pass filter is set at about 1.6 uh, kilohertz, and then those gain stages, uh, sorry, those um, separate signal paths allow me to then apply different effects, different amplifying models, different. You know, I've got a chorus on the low end here, like a very mild light chorus, uh, which just gives me uh, a little bit of swell, a little bit of fat in the low end. I've got a um, kind of clean, you know, thumping or 15-inch style uh, amp head and cabinet model to just get massive bass coming out of that. And, uh, and then I've got a dynamics processor with a limiter and compressor uh, built in there. And um, this gives me sort of a really fat low end with a little bit of wobble, but again, very, very subtly. You know, chorus can be really annoying and overwhelming, uh, lose a lot of definition. Um, so I have that fairly mildly tuned in. Also, only on the low end. And on the mid range, I have here a really a bite. So I've kind of set up this as a tube style or a you know, grindy sound. And which is kind of like that Gens Benz head it allows me to emulate, um, you know, the, the tone, the signal path that that amp has. And then again, a dynamics compressor uh, going into it. Like this is a mixer at the other side over here where all these are combined. And then the high end, uh, I wanted to treat differently, separate from the mid range and the low end as well. I didn't want any compressor, uh, sorry, any um, chorus artifacts in there. And I didn't want any distortion, so I took the high end at about 1.6, I said, uh, kilohertz, send that through a limiter so you know my fret noises and, and things like that don't um, don't spoil the uh, uh, the you know the uh, signal chain, and uh, and then I run that through a, another a different amp uh, with a very bright uh, you know. A clean high end uh, that uh, again I auditioned each of these individually and then I've combined them so the low end and the high end are uh, you know, are separate so I don't have a separate channel for the mid I don't have like a mixer that has individually assignable inputs and faders although maybe I just haven't found it in you know, my P yet but there is a crossfade and I have the crossfade set up with two stereo pairs and I summed in the medium and the, and the, the mid and the highs, and then I 
the lows on its own channel. And then I can dial it in uh, to the level that I want. And, um, and then, of course, it goes to the outputs. So let's hear what this guy sounds like. So something really interesting in the very low registers. You get that super mean bottom, you know, uh, because the frequencies are all very low. But as you go up the instrument, you get to the upper mids and you know the high end of the playability of the of the instrument. And you start to cross over into the mids, and more of the signal is now coming through that middle of the chain. And you now have sort of um, a timbre difference that actually changes as you go up and down the instrument gradually. So this is really cool, because if you want to do like biting this, you get a lot more um, of the, the bite, more of the distortion. When you come in with your bottom end, you just have clean bottom end and not that fat, muddy stuff that uh, you have um, trouble you know, with definition, trouble with articulation, with uh, even pitch sometimes in a mix. So uh, I thought this was really cool. And again, it's not, it's subtle and it's not over the top. If you want over the top, you can always go to the extreme. Here I'm just going to finish up with something fun here. Uh, I have a, a harmonizer. And the harmonizer uh, patch allows me to, uh, as any harmonizer does, uh, to pick um, key. And then it um, doesn't just do pitch shifting; it harmonizes uh, right in there, in the um, you know in the right uh, the proper tone, uh, the proper pitch definitions. So, you know, you can go crazy. Um, and all of that is at your disposal. Of course, for other instruments that you want to plug in uh, other than the bass, I play fretless primarily, in fact. And I've been really itching to try this uh, on the fretless. Maybe I'll make another video. Um, but, uh, you know, this has just been, I think it's about maybe $200, just shy of 200 Although I can't say for sure with, um, with the... Uh, Supply chain and inflation might be more than that now. Call it 180. That includes the Raspberry Pi, the case, and the iSound board. And um, these things together are so versatile, high performing, clean as a whistle, easy to set up, easy to back up, in fact. So, you know, you screw with a Raspberry Pi and it's uh, sometimes unstable, um, depending on what you're doing, and uh, you don't want to lose your work. And uh, uh, sounds great. So anyway, that's what I thought I'd share with you guys today. Um, enjoy and um, any questions or feedback.